Welcome to the show. I'm Mike. I'm Maggie. And this is Friends on Fire. We're a podcast on a mission to get friends that talk about money. All right, Maggie. So what are we talking about today? Um, We are going to talk about happiness, sex, and money. All right. Yeah. A little bit of a deviation from our normal, uh, our normal show topics, but I'm excited about it. Yeah. Okay. We'll see how this goes. Before we jump into our topic, we do have a listener comment that we want to play. It was um, someone who left a tip after our crazy frugal stuff we do episode. So let's play it. All right. Just the tip though. Just, <laughs> just the tip. This episode is going to be full of some amazing puns. I didn't, It took me a second to even get that. Uh, yeah, we're just going to play the tip. Here we go. Well played. Hey, it's Susanna. I was listening to your crazy frugal hacks, and I had a couple I wanted to add for older kids. Uh, is your son going to prom? If so, you should really look at eBay, St. Vincent de Paul, and other thrift stores for secondhand tuxedos. My friend got her son one for $20 from St. Vincent de Paul. I have another friend who got one off eBay for something similar. I thought that was really absolutely brilliant. Um, also, $5 maybe Tuesdays. So if you love going to the movies but you hate paying full price, Tuesday night could be movie night for your family. Thanks, Susanna, for those tips, both really awesome tips. Thank you so much. Okay, so today we want to talk about the benefits of improving your finances and how it can make you happier, honestly. So one of the things that we've said before on our show, and we were super excited to actually see us quoted recently, Um, by Inspired a Fire, where they quoted Mike and I saying on a previous episode, money can buy you happiness by having so much in the bank that it buys your freedom. Um, And that really is the way we think about, you know, our lives and our lifestyles. So quick background story here. The other day I was listening to a podcast about sex, and it got me to thinking about this topic and the link between healthy finances and a good sex life. And What's funny is it just like, I'll I'll just sort of get on these topics and and start going down a rabbit hole. So I started Googling things and I was like, surely there's actually some research done on this. Lo and behold, there's a ton of research on it and tons of articles linking a healthy financial life to a healthy sex life. We can link to some of those articles, but it just got us to thinking about not just sex, but just happiness in general. And just the idea that there are so many benefits to improving your finances. So today we want to cover the top five reasons that we believe there are benefits to improving your finances. And as we sometimes say, getting financially fit. Let's start with number one. So like I started in the intro, turns out being financially fit actually will improve your sex life. So there's some really interesting quotes from some of these articles, and I'm just going to read a few of them. So one is sex and money are inextricably connected, both within relationships and in our lives as individuals. Sex and money are key contributors to our well-being and state of mind. Another one is um, just talking about how much money issues cause stress and the idea that chronic stress can wear down people's ability to let go and fully enjoy themselves during sex. There's a whole men's health study that one in three men admit a connection between financial stress and their sex life. Um, And just the idea that the stress of financial hardships can overflow into the bedroom. So look, this is not a podcast about sex, because this is a podcast about money, so we will get off this topic now and move on to another, the second reason. It sounds like you get off on this topic quite regularly. (laughs) Oh my god, there's so many opportunities for puns here. This is going to be a punny episode. (laughs) Um, Okay, so number two, it improves your mental health. The reality is money can cause stress. So if you are financially fit, it will significantly improve your mental health. If you, if you look at certain studies about what causes the most stress in people's lives, the death of a loved one is always number one. But I think in many of these studies, number two is losing your job, which means in, in a big part, losing your money, uh, losing your income. And so I, I can certainly see how all kinds of situations about money will cause significant stress in your life. Yeah, a huge impact um, specifically on your mental health. And yeah, I think the idea is that losing your job can create debt and just the idea of being in debt in general puts a lot of stress on people, a lot of stress on your relationships, a lot of stress on you personally. Number three, being financially fit can improve your physical health. So as we just talked about, money is related to stress and anxiety, and then that can manifest itself into physical symptoms. 
So it can cause a lack of sleep. It can increase your blood pressure. It can cause you to gain weight through stress eating and other things. And ultimately, it can just have a really you know negative impact on your physical health versus if you are financially fit, it can have a really positive impact on your physical health because it's not creating that mental stress and anxiety. Additionally, if you are not stressed out about money, it allows you to find time in your day to exercise and be healthier. If you are constantly worried about money and working three jobs, you are not going to find the time to exercise. And so the less stress you have also probably means that you have less on your mind, less things that you have to take care of, more time that you can dedicate to exercising and focusing on eating healthy. So yeah, I I do think there's a big physical benefit to having a healthy financial life. Okay, number four, being financially fit can improve your self-confidence and your self-esteem. And I think this is an important one to clarify. It's not self-confidence from the angle of, let me show you all that I have. Like, I'm so confident. I've got, you know, a fancy car, blah, blah, blah. It's just confidence that you'll be okay. And so we're going through a pretty big correction in the market right now. And as an example, that can really stress some people out. That can make people lose a lot of their confidence and self-esteem. They see their 401ks going down heavily. So all of these things around mental health, physical health, self-confidence, they're all interrelated. But just the idea that the more financially fit you are, the less it's going to have an impact on that. And so One of the things that I think about, and Mike and I talk about this a lot, is this is a rough patch we're going through in the economy and in the world right now. But ultimately, my my self-esteem and my confidence are still very high because I know that I have made strong choices over the years. And I think that's the part that really resonates with me. It's the strong choices. So on our last episode, when I talked about what to do with your investments in the market, you shouldn't get too confident when you make a great decision. You shouldn't beat yourself up when you make a bad decision. And what unfortunately happens is that when people get themselves into debt, when they make poor investment choices, they really beat themselves up and it impacts their self-esteem. And that is what we are talking about here. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I think another point that's worth making too is many people listening to this may not consider themselves financially fit right? They may think they have a lot of room for opportunity. And I think the idea is you don't have to be perfect. You can constantly be making you know, new choices and new decisions. And as you even make those small incremental changes in your behavior and in your activities, they can have a really positive impact on your self-esteem, which then impacts your mental health, your physical health. All of these things, again, are related. Um, So just thinking, you know, where this may feel daunting and overwhelming to many people, just the idea that every day you make a different choice and the choice you make today can be better than the choices you made yesterday. And they will very quickly have a positive impact on all of these things we're talking about all the way back to your sex life. Okay, let's jump into number five, which I actually think, though many people might think sex is the most important, I actually think number five is important, the most important. So overall, Being financially fit, we believe, just makes you happier. So we started the episode by making this point, but the feeling of freedom and options that we've talked about a lot on this podcast, it's one of the most amazing feelings in the world, right? It, It will get you through the toughest times in your life and it will make you happy on a level that is so much more sustainable than just about anything other than the relationships in your life in my opinion. And the thing that really confuses me about people who don't understand this is that they see financial fitness and financial health as being some sort of punishment. And mm-hmm. so they see it as the opposite of being healthy. Ha- people, The opposite of being happy. What did I say? Healthy. Um, they see it as the opposite of being healthy. Happy. Jesus. They see it as <laughs> you the- gotta play, You got to keep this in. <laughs> you always keep all my blunders in, so keep that shit in there, Mike. <laughs> Well, that's because it's on brand for you. I I need to protect my image here. (laughs) Uh, It is the opposite of being happy. There you go. People say, well, I'm going to spend my money because I don't want to be miserable. I want to, I don't want to, life's short. I want to enjoy my money. Therefore, I'm not going to max out my 401k. I'm going to go spend it. And that is, as we've discussed a few times on this show, that is a very short term mindset. And the real sustained happiness you get is when you are no longer worried about 
making that trade-off of 401k versus buying something. You have accumulated the resources, the safety net, and the financial health that you can just do what you need to do to be happy. You can pursue all of those activities that you love. I think that is such an important point. There are people at times that think that the decisions that we make in our lives are things where we're having to suffer, you know, where we're like, we're not giving our kids something, like we're suffering, we're not enjoying something. And I think a point that's just really important to make is like, I don't feel like I'm suffering. I'm very happy. I'm incredibly grateful and thankful for everything I have. And I consume with moderation, right? I don't need tons of stuff to make me happy. I've also, over the years, more and more realized that stuff doesn't make me happy, right? There's certain things, physical objects that make me happy, um, but there's so many other things in life that make me happy before physical objects. There's only one thing that I suffer through, and that is doing this podcast in your freezing cold basement. That is a weekly suffering. (laughs) Well, that's why I've cranked up the heat. It was 74 degrees in here when you got here today. I'm actually quite comfortable. And it's like getting warm outside. So thank okay. you. So ju- just to that point of sort of reminding people that, you know, you can be financially fit and make responsible financial decisions and still be happy. And I, I think a lot of people need to kind of rethink and adjust their mindsets around what really matters to them and what will make them happy in the short term versus the long term. And I prefer the idea of financial freedom in the long term. And so I'm willing to make some, you know, kind of trade-offs in the short term. But I think when you really get down to the heart of what makes you happy, you realize that it isn't physical things often. And one of the exercises that they did in the documentary Playing With Fire, which we've talked about on this podcast before, they wrote down a list of the top 10 things that make them happy. I did this exercise with my husband and really enjoyed it. I think I wrote a blog post about this when I did the review on playing with fire. I wrote down the top 10 10 things that make me happy. My husband did the same. Have you done this with your wife, Mike? No. You should totally do it. You'll notice, well, at least for ours and for many people's, most of the things on the list don't involve a lot of money. And some of the things might, but 90% of the things on our list or 9 out of 10 of the things on our list did not involve a lot of money. I think it just reinforces the point and kind of regrounding people and what really does make you happy. And it's likely time with your family, time with your friends, these, you know, little moments in life, like enjoying a nice cup of coffee and being able to just sit down and read, watching your kids play their sports, watching your kids, you know, enjoy a happy moment. And all of these things that, again, don't cost a significant amount of money. And I think realizing the relationship between happiness and money is such a complex relationship in a way and can be confusing at times to people, but is so important. And it is just our main point of this entire episode, though we teased you in with a title about sex, which is also very important. Our bigger point here is that... What is our point? (laughs) That the number one benefit of being financially fit is that it makes you happier. That is our point. If we were to take a very high level view of your life and your reason for living, I think most people would agree that having family, having people to love, and then giving your life purpose is what? multiple people to love? (laughs) Maybe. Well, not at the same time. Okay. No, like having friends and family that you are close to And having some sort of purpose and passion is what life is about and what makes people happy. And when you are stressed out about money, you distance yourself from the people you love because there's conflict. The stress creates arguments. It creates distractions. It creates things that you have to go do to solve the problems created from money. It distances you from the people you love. And then on the flip side, if you are overwhelmed by your need to earn money, and the situation you're in, you certainly don't have the mind space or the capacity in your life to go pursue your passions and find your purpose. On the flip side, though, if you have the money you need and you have the safety net, you can then open yourself up to find the things that really make you happy. And that's one of the reasons why this podcast came to be. So we are both healthy financially. We have the capacity in our lives to pick up new projects, 
We're not stressed out about these things. We have the ability to go pursue this passion project, which makes us happy. And if we were overwhelmed by money and unable to dedicate free time to doing this, we would be missing out on this thing that's really enjoyable. I figured out the formula that I was trying to reference earlier when I say this is super complex and I, it's not that complex, but people get confused about what creates happiness. People buy a lot of stuff because they think it's going to make them happy. That stuff often puts them into debt or stretches them further than they should stretch themselves financially. That debt creates a lot of stress, which does not make people happy. Tons of research around that. And so it's just this complicated relationship where people think that buying things is going to make them happier and it doesn't it actually does the opposite especially if you can't afford it it's, it's very different if you can afford things so there's plenty of things i will buy like i'm wearing noise canceling headphones right now i wrote a whole blog post on this because i'm so passionate about noise canceling headphones and the value they have added to my life i'm wearing a pair of 300 hundred dollar headphones right now and they make me happy and i can afford them if I couldn't afford them, they wouldn't make me happy. I'd be stressed that I may not be able to pay my mortgage this month because I bought a pair of headphones that I can't afford, right? And that's that's a silly example to some people, but it should be very meaningful. And to further clarify that point, though, you bought a $300 pair of headphones, but you are not wearing a $300 sweatshirt. You're not wearing a $300 pair of pants or a $300 pair of shoes. You make trade-offs and you buy the things that are important yeah, to you. Yeah, that's a great point. Yes. So I, don't everybody just go buy every $300 <laughs> item they want because yes. it will make them happy like yes. Maggie. And I think, I mean, a huge piece of it is, can you afford it? If you can afford it and it is not going to stretch you so thin that you are stressed about making basic payments in your life or having an emergency fund or being able to get through a job loss or something like that. You shouldn't be buying those things and they will not make you happier. They will just stress you out. They might feel like they make you happier in the short term, but there's so much research around this. They will not make you happier in the long term. And we've talked about the quote unquote afford it type mentality in a few episodes. But when it comes to stress related to money, even if you have a lot of money and earn a lot of money and can afford quote unquote $300 headphones. If you are not yet at the point where you feel great about your finances, I would argue that you're not at the point where you can afford something like that. So if you have not saved up a considerable nest egg, you don't have a good safety net, then maybe you still are not there yet. Maybe you still shouldn't be buying these things because you have more work to be done to get to the point where you are stress-free as it relates to money. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Let's try to recap this episode with our top three points. Number one, money can buy you happiness, but not in the way that you might think. We believe money can buy you happiness in the sense of striving for financial freedom and just the idea of being financially fit. Number two, figure out what makes you happy. Figure out your why, and perhaps it's one of the reasons we covered today. Number three, Get more financially fit and you are guaranteed a better sex life. Guaranteed, Maggie. Yeah, guaranteed. How, is, how exactly guaranteed. is this guaranteed? I'm not sure. We're going to have to read the fine print somewhere. Yeah, we'll, we'll put a warranty disclaimer on the yeah. end of our episode. But anyways, you're welcome because basically our podcast just improved your sex life. So you're welcome. Okay. On that point, we should wrap this up. All right. Mike's minute on the mic. Okay. I got a good Mike's minute on the mic today. Okay. Um, okay, so this is where I ask Mike a question. He's got 60 seconds to answer it. I am starting my stopwatch here. Um, okay, Mike, what are the top five things that make you happy? Spending time with my family. Okay. Traveling. Okay. Creating videos. Okay. DIY projects. And talking about money with my friends <laughs> nice well played okay, Thank that's you. impressive that was only 20 seconds so you know i can't answer any question i barely could ask the question in 20 seconds i think i've already talked for 20 seconds actually <laughs> um well done well, i hope i hope you don't do everything in 20 seconds mike some things, i am extremely efficient <laughs> some things are not better when they're that fast <laughs> all uh, right maggie your turn what are your top five? Oh, my top five gosh 
I actually wrote my top 10 list and now I can't think of them and I'm not good on the spot. My top five. I don't know about my top five. Can I do my top 10? No, you have to do top five. That's okay. part of the question. Well, I did. I told you I did that top 10 list. So I have it right here in front of me, actually. Um, I don't know if I can like choose five out of those You have lists. to choose five. You made me oh, choose five. Jeez. Um, okay. Lazy mornings in bed with my husband and coffee. That's one. Okay. I like to be in bed with my husband and have a cup of coffee. Like, okay. Cuddle with him and have some coffee. That's like just nice. Um, I really like to ride bikes with my kids or like do stuff outside with my kids. I love just like cuddling in bed with the kids or like bedtime when we're kind of like they want us in their beds and they're like come lay with us and stuff. Like I love that time because they still like us and enjoy us and want us to hang out with them. I'm really hard at doing this quickly. Your, your list was like bam, bam, bam. And I'm like, let me tell you about each one of my top five. Um, This was honestly like since we're talking about sex on this episode, like number four, I would actually say is sex. I think I referred to it as being intimate with my husband in the list, a.k.a. sex. Number five is just taking my kids on like some adventure. So like taking them to go get ice cream or taking them to the park and doing stuff, just like, you know, doing fun stuff with my kids. It was probably be my top five. That was a, I appreciate those top five. It's <laughs> a very narrow view of your life though. Apparent like three of them involve being in bed. <laughs> One, I do like two to involve sleep. just going out with your kids. I like to sleep and hang out with my kids. Okay. And hang out with my husband. I have a simple but happy life. It's the simple pleasures in life, yeah. Maggie. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's All right. Wrap. So that was Mike and Maggie's three minutes on the mic. <laughs> Mike's 20 seconds. Maggie's five minutes on the mic. Okay. So let's just wrap this up with some of our closing items. As always, we would love for anyone to leave us any comments, questions, tips. You can call or text us at 404-981-3370 and we will play it on the air. And please, please, please leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast. It really helps other people find our show. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, etc. And you can find all of those links to our social channels on our friendsonfire.org website and check out our latest episodes there also. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Maggie. Bye. Bye.